From the second data-centric design iteration, we understood that timing and prediction were potentially key elements in the ability of householders to shift their daily routines to consume more of their own locally generated electricity. So this time we started our data collection with the design of an algorithm for demand shifting. Here are a few basic ingredients, a washing machine load, the weather forecast, the electricity generation and consumption of the household over the past few days. Achieving a basic but reasonable prediction of energy consumption and generation, relying on the state-of-the-art literature, was important for us to demonstrate feasibility. In this fast loop of exploration and implementation, there is not so much place for concepts and ideas that cannot be realistically implemented in the short term. And this algorithm was also the main provider of fresh data input during this iteration. Here is an example of actual washing machine consumption in red, accumulated over a week of data. And in blue, the shifted consumption to best fit the local generation. These inputs were key for the data analysis that we conducted in collaboration with participants. With an extensive perspective of what is happening regarding the Landry routine, after two iterations, we are still missing a clear understanding of why it is happening in this way. A question that we pinned as top priority to succeed in shifting the use of appliances. To shed light on this why, we designed personal data visualization for each household, mapping a month of Landry in connection with environmental factors influencing local generation, mainly sunset, sunrise, and actual weather for each day. Days are on the x-axis and the 24 hours are on the y-axis. So each pie chart on this map represents a washing machine load with a green slice coming from the solar panels and a red slice coming from the electricity grid. In this so-called participatory data analysis, we confronted participants with their own data and asked them to help us understand how their Landry routines are happening to look like that on the paper. Here participants started getting their agendas and smartphones out to investigate. Oh yeah, we were waiting for our big son to come back from sport. Oh, for that one, I was too late. Totally forgot about the laundry on that day. Something like that. This process nailed down the process of doing laundry and the frictions with local generation. Then we confronted the participants with a similar visualization of their own data. This time we used our demand shifting algorithm to highlight when they had run their washing machine, the red dot, and also when it would have been the greenest time on that given day, here the green dots on the visualization. It stressed opportunities for demand shifting with support of information at the right time. This led us to the conceptualization of four intervention moments around doing the laundry. We designed intervention strategies as first reactive, for example, information taking place after the washing machine event, Second, proactive, a recommendation, for instance, for future washing machine use. And third, in use, automation of the washing machine load, for instance. Finally, we turned these concepts into prototypes. We implemented and deployed these data-driven strategies via text messages and emails. On the left-hand side, 
we can see a proactive text message example suggesting to do the laundry within a two-hour time slot that is predicted to be best for solar energy consumption. This message was sent in the morning or in the evening before, depending on participant preferences. This feature was a clear success among participants as it provided information in advance and through a suggestion giving them the ability to follow the suggestion or to completely ignore the message. The reactive feedback was also a text message fired when the load was just completed and congratulating when using significant amount of local energy. Finally, the more traditional energy feedback via email was reported as not so useful. Based in the past, without possibility to change anything, on top of that, our assumption is that emails and laundry routines are not really fitting together. Our final intervention was around the contextual control, letting the washing machine run at the greenest time within a set of parameters automatically. For this prototype, focused on time once again, offering participants the ability to set an earlier start time and a latest finish time. The architecture looked like this. The connected washing machine was communicating via Zigbee to an electronic tablet. This tablet was interacting with a server, getting updated with latest data from the home energy system and the weather forecast. Combining this information with the selected washing cycle from the washing machine, a program on the tablet was regularly running our demand shifting algorithm to update and start the washing machine at the best time within the user constraints. From this final prototype, we learned that participants liked the ability to set up and forget about their laundry while knowing that it was simply taken care of. Beyond the feasibility and usability testing, we collected important data to iterate on our demand shifting algorithm. Once again, we closed the iteration cycle, so let's recap. This time, we had a data-driven simulation running a demand shifting algorithm. Exploring the results, we've got clear indication of the shifting potential. Compiling all this data in a personal visualization, we co-analyzed data with the participants to better understand washing machine routines. We conceptualized these insights into four time-dependent data-driven interventions and validated our hypothesis that proactive suggestion and contextual controls are the most promising design directions. That's it for this third iteration. In the final video, I invite you for a wrap-up of this case study and a reflection on the data-centric design approach.